Wesley, congratulations. A solid match win today. Summarize the games for us. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think I played anything spectacular. Uh, Prague was playing very well, very solid. He just over pushed on game three. And, you know, if you lose with the white pieces in a four game match, it's almost impossible to come back. Uh, so, you know, I was just trying to play solidly and my opponent gave me a gift, which is unexpected. And game three was also looking good for Prague with no trouble at all, but that would you say was the turning point in the match? Uh... Yeah. yeah, for sure. As I said, whoever wins the first game, such a short match has a huge advantage. I would estimate you have like an 80%, 85% chance to win if you win the first game. It doesn't matter white or black. If you win the first game, uh, then, you know, then that's it pretty much. Um, I mean, game three was very interesting. I played this line, bishop e7. I played this c6 line, which Hikaru always, always plays. And I prepared a little bit, but I actually think I mix up the move order. Like, I shouldn't play b6, b5, closing the queen side so soon. Maybe I should play bishop d8 first, bishop d8, bishop c7. And white plays b5. I can always just move the rook somewhere, like rook a3 or some, something like that. Or take, take, and then some rook a Win c6. Um, but after b5, I think white is better. Like I played too quickly, closing the queen side. And, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't that pleasant. Uh, but as I said earlier, I think white should have traded the queens first and then play the end game and see what happens. I want to ask you Prague is the youngest player on the tour. It's a clash of generation, but also a clash of styles when the two of you play. I don't know if it's Clash of Style, but, but he's so young he could almost become my Sanya. <laughs> uh, but it's it's nice to... I mean, I think we have pretty similar styles. And Prague plays very solidly, of course. He's very good at tactics when he needs to. Uh, he's got very stable openings, which, uh, you know, he has very solid openings so far. So, I mean, it's a tough match. Uh, but I'm very pleased that India has a lot of young and up-and-coming talents. I first met Prague six years ago in Waikanse and he was so little he was with his mom and I couldn't have imagined that he would become so strong uh, so quickly so I mean, it's good to see that India has a lot of young talents like China's doing very poorly right now like they have almost zero chess there but at least other countries are picking up the pace and actually after the tournament I'm going to play in India so I'm very excited for that you know and compete against uh, all the young talents. So. You're going to play against Prague there as well. <laughs> yeah, Prague, Arjun, Gokesh. What is, I'm very excited. What is it like to play against the younger generation? Does your approach change or do you just keep it going as uh, as you would against any other player? Well, it's hard. It's not easy. I mean, you don't want to lose against a player almost half your age, right? I, I think it's, as you get older, it's, there's more pressure when you're playing young people. Like. I generally have a bad result against teenagers, especially in, in classical chess, because they're, you know, they're so dedicated to chess. They're very focused. Um, probably most of them are homeschooled and they have their coaches. They have the full support of their parents. So they're like all 100% into chess. And it's the same in the US. Like when you're a teenager, you're not sure yet whether what you want to do with your life, whether you want to become a professional chess player or go to college. So like this championship, I lost to Christopher Yu, and uh, yeah, we all, also Hans Niemann, yeah, as a teenager. So it's an, they, they're at the point where it's an interesting part of their life, and you know they can give their own chess. And then I, I'm not sure exactly if all of them will become chess professionals or what to say, but uh, you know it's right now they're at the prime prime time of their life, I must say. Let's say we often speak about this new wave of chess players that's arrived, this new generation, sort of a changing of the guard. Uh, you mentioned about the youngsters, even in the US. Do you do you see a bright future? You're an established elite player yourself. But what about the future of US chess? Future of US chess? Uh, I think Abhim Manu Mishra, part Indian also, will become very big, will become such a huge talent. And, looking forward. I mean, we have many strong, young, up-and-coming players. Uh, we also have, who was it? Uh, the guy, the kid from Africa, I can't spell his name, Tani, Tani here, yeah. who just recently became an IM, I believe, so congratulations. Um, 
yeah, it's nice. But the problem in the US is that so many players are switching federations. Like we have Grigory Oparin, who is very strong, close to 7700. Uh, I think Yu Yang is living in the US also. So there's a lot of, a lot of competition. How do you feel about that? Because I know this is a topic that's discussed a lot about uh, US players switching federations. What's your personal opinion on it? Yeah, I mean, it's fine because I'm, uh, I'm also one. The problem is that the world is uncertain these days. We have war in Russia. Uh, we have less and less tournaments in Europe because of that. So players are trying to find what's best for them. I mean, personally for me, I'm totally good with it because I believe competition makes you stronger and I want to compete against the world's best. But uh, at the same time, it's becoming harder and harder for American players to become chess professionals. Like uh, the youth championship, for instance, has, hasn't really increased in price tremendously. Meanwhile, it's getting stronger and stronger. Like I tied for fifth recently, <laughs> which even for me, it's getting more difficult. So you just have to be better and you have to be stronger. I, I think uh, at the end of the day, as, uh, as uh, Trump says, if you come in the country legally, then you work your way, then it's all good. You know, we, we, love, the, uh, we love the competition. I see it's always so nice to hear your thoughts and you're always so gracious and humble. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights. I also, I'm very pleased to win my second match in a row. <laughs> so yes, and congratulations. Yeah, in the opening, I was asking Anish, what if you lose all seven matches on the wrap? You know? But fortunately, you still get the 5,000 minimum. <laughs> all right, well, congratulations on a good match today. Thank you, Wesley.